completed in Ladies and gentlemen, presiding over these exercises is Dr. Wallace Lowe, President of the University of Maryland. Good evening. Welcome to the 2014 Winter Commencement Exercises of the University of Maryland. Commencement marks the start of a new chapter in the lives of our graduates. But this ceremony is also a wistful farewell, spoken in words of endearment by the university to our graduates and by our graduates to your alma mater. We will begin with a moment of reflection led by Mr. Tarif Shreem, the campus Muslim chaplain. His remarks will be followed by the singing of the national anthem led by Amy Broadbent. She is a graduating senior in music and hails from Rockville, Maryland. And led by the University of Maryland Wind Ensemble conducted by Craig Potter, a doctoral student in music. Please stand and remain standing for the moment of reflection and for the singing of our national anthem. Today is not just another day. It's a gift and a precious moment in which we need to celebrate with joy your accomplishments the accomplishments of the 2014 graduating class of the University of Maryland. Today we come with hearts deeply thankful to all those who have helped us in our lives and in reaching this significant milestone. As we embark on the journeys ahead, may we recognize our need to walk with humility so we may continue to learn and to grow. May we have the courage to look inside of ourselves and recognize the enormous potential we have so we can begin to touch the seeds of greatness that lie within us and move with vigor to shape our destinies. May we understand that we can never become enlightened until we become occupied not with being right but with lifting the hearts of people around us and healing our families and communities May we fully grasp the beautiful truth that our lives can't magically change, that in order to accomplish things we've never accomplished, to become people we've never been, we must make sacrifices we've never made and do things we've never done. May we recognize that our lives will be measured not by the wealth we accumulate or the careers we assume, but by the number of lives we touch and the smiles we create. May we find ways to an inspired life, absorb the inspiration of others, and become an inspiration. May we enjoy where we are on the way to where we are going. May we become grateful for all the gifts that we have and learn to let those gifts flow through us that anyone we meet today on this day will be enriched by us, by our eyes, our smiles, our touch just by our grateful presence. May we realize today before tomorrow that when we do so, we will begin to touch the seeds of joy within us and discover ourselves to be far greater than we ever imagined. Amen.
Please be seated. Thank you, Mr. Schramm, for your thoughtful reflections. And thank you, Emma, Amy, for your energetic and inspired rendition of the national anthem. You have a heavenly voice. And of course, thank you to the University of Maryland Wynn Ensemble. Now, seated on the front row, are the students who are serving as marshals this evening, and they were selected on the basis of their academic accomplishments and contributions to campus life. Would the student marshals please stand up and be recognized? Thank you. And present also to honor our graduates this evening are the faculty, the emeriti faculty, the faculty marshals, and staff. Would you all please stand to be recognized? And thank you for coming. So we are here to celebrate the graduation of our students. And of course, commencement means that there are many speakers. But I'm reminded what a good friend and Irish priest once reminded me. He said, just remember, a speaker at a commencement ceremony is like, it's like the body at an old fashioned Irish wake. People need the body to have a party but nobody expects it to say very much. <laughs> so uh, I know that everyone on this platform who's speaking, myself included, will be mercifully brief in our remarks. Because I want to assure you that although words of wisdom will be spoken from the stage this evening, those words are immortal, but the speeches will not be eternal. So our first speaker is Rahila Ahmed, and she's a student representative on the University System of Maryland Board of Regents. She's a senior in the Robert H. Smith School of Business, and she brings greetings on behalf of the Board of Regents. President Lowe, distinguished guests, friends, family, and my peers sitting before me, good evening and congratulations. Y'all did it. You're here. You made it. You are graduating from the University of Maryland College Park. Whoa. <laughs> I heard that finally. I'm here today to bring regards from the University System of Maryland Board of Regents. For those who don't know, the Board of Regents is the governing board for 12 institutions for higher education in Maryland. And every year, one student is chosen from among the 160,000 students at these colleges to be on the board as a full voting member. This year, that student is me. But I'm here ultimately because of you and I'm here for you. My voice is your voice. Your struggles are my motivation to fight for what's right. Class of 2014, today, I just wanna say thank you. Thank you for inspiring me. 
Thank you for catalyzing change. Thank you for daring to speak against injustices and thank you for moving forward in the face of adversity. I'm here to assure you that you've left your imprint on this campus and in this system, if only by inspiring this one lone girl to do more and to do better. As a senior at this institution myself, I can only hope that when I'm in your shoes next semester, <laughs> I feel what I see here today. Hope, dreams, smiles, and success. This is truly a beautiful moment. And on behalf of the University System of Maryland, Board of Regents, I want to say we are proud of you. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> do good, be kind, dream big, thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2014. Go Terps! Thank you, Rahila. We are indeed proud of our graduates, and we are proud of you as our representative on the Board of Regents. Now, I would like to introduce some of the members of the platform party who are seated behind me, and I would ask that when I call your name, if you will please stand and remain standing until I have called everyone, introduced everyone, and I would ask the audience to please refrain from applauding until everyone has been introduced so we're not here all night. Marianne Ranking, Senior Vice President and Provost. She is a biologist, I hope I get this right, Marianne, an entomologist who specializes in physiology and behavior. Now, did I get that right? Yes. Good, thank you. I get a B. <laughs> Linda Clement. Vice President, Vice President for Student Affairs. She is a Terp. She got her PhD in counseling here from the University of Maryland, and she has been a Vice President here for 13 years. Carlo Colella, Vice President for Administration and Finance, and he's another Terp. Where is Carlo? He is a civil engineer and a graduate of the University of Maryland. Patrick O'Shea, he is the Vice President for Research, another TERP. He got his PhD in Physics, and he works in Electrical and Computer Engineering. Kevin Anderson, Director of Athletics. And uh, what I love about Kevin is that he is always trying to integrate the front porch of this university, athletics, with the rest of the academic house uh, of the university. Patrick Ronk, where is Patrick? Oh, there you are, Patrick. He's the president of the undergraduate student government, and he is a junior in government and politics, and I understand he's off to Israel in a few days. We'll have a wonderful visit there for the next two weeks. Deborah Hemingway, there you are, Deborah, president of the graduate student government from Athens, Ohio and she is a PhD candidate in biophysics. Did I get that right? Good, thank you. Don Webster, who is the chair of the University Senate. He's a senior agricultural extension agent for the Y Research Education Center in Queenstown, Maryland. For those of you who don't know Queenstown, Maryland, it is on the Eastern Shore. <laughs> Somebody from, East, from the Eastern Shore, Don. Um, Martha Nell Smith, our university marshal. There you are, where are you? Okay, the one who twirls the, the, the mace as we walk in. And she's a professor of English and an expert in the poetry of Emily Dickinson. Finally, uh, I'm gonna ask all the deans to stand. I'm not gonna introduce them because later on in the program, they will introduce themselves so that I don't mess up. Will the deans, the academic leaders of this institution, please stand up. And now we can all applaud them.
Thank you. Now, at each commencement, we have a student come and address the graduating class. That student is selected by a committee, and that committee is headed by our provost. And today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Ms. Kelsey Hughes from Abingdon, Pennsylvania, who, and I'm told that that is a suburb of Philadelphia. And, um, but first, before I introduce um, Kelsey, I believe your family, your sister, your younger sister, your friend, your relatives are here somewhere. Would the Hughes family please stand up and be recognized and wave so we can see you? Oh, there you are. Thank you. Kelsey graduates this evening. Uh, why do you stand up so people and um, so they can see you? Graduates this evening with a major in journalism and two minors. She has served in the Baltimore Sun as the first multimedia intern, paving the way for other students. She went on to do a similar internship with the Federal Reserve. And along the way, she discovered her inner entrepreneur, winning a foundation grant to create a toolkit that launches citizen journalists. It is my great pleasure to, to introduce our student speaker, Kelsey Hughes. I'm the kind of person who does not like uncertainty. I make weekend plans weeks in advance. I look for long-term problems at the beginning of new relationships. I know the names of the next 10 cats I will adopt over the course of my lifetime. So when I first came to the University of Maryland, I was excited. Because here, I would become adequately equipped for all that life brought me. And here, I would be in control of my future. I would learn exactly what I wanted to do and how to get there. This is certainly what I thought at that time of my life. Barely 18, totally unsure of everything, how to navigate our ginormous campus, whether I'd chosen the right major, if I would have any friends. But I clung to the hope that enrolling in college would be the same as dropping myself into a funnel where I would circle around and around, and then by graduation, fall out the bottom of the funnel, squarely into the job I would have for the rest of my life. One thing that I have learned at Maryland is that college does not work that way. <laughs> but this is by no means a bad thing. I started as a journalism major, wanting to be a reporter. Soon, I picked up my French minor, and then a minor in LGBT studies. And by the way, I have no plans of being a reporter uh, on LGBT issues in France. <laughs> being at Maryland has taught me that college is not about picking up the skills you need to get that one job. It is about becoming a well-rounded student, one who is curious and passionate about learning, and is resourceful and able to apply those skills creatively. What I have learned is that the true mark of a successful Maryland graduate is to say yes to any opportunity that seems interesting, even if its connection to one's future isn't immediately apparent. This is why I joined a team writing a research proposal for a grant despite never being on good terms with science. This is why I took an internship at the Federal Reserve while having no interest in economics. And this is why I joined a fun and totally weird group of people who shadow cast the Rocky Horror Picture Show. These are among the things I never imagined myself doing before coming to college. Even within my major, my career interests switched, from music journalism to community reporting to news photographer, with many other detours in between. And though I have ultimately decided journalism is not my path going forward, I will take the lessons I have learned in journalism into the field of, in of information science, hopefully into my future career as a librarian. Like journalism, libraries are in a constant state of flux. The materials I will be working with might no longer be tangible. In fact, it's entirely possible I won't even be working with books at all. 
I've read about libraries that lend out gardening tools and children's toys to their customers. And I've learned of libraries that serve more as information hubs and community spaces than keepers of books. As a librarian, I will have a hand in shaping the future of library science, much like my fellow graduates from the Merrill College will have a hand in shaping the future of journalism. In both areas, new technology has completely changed the model of the profession. All of us will face similar challenges as our own fields innovate. Maryland has prepared us to face these challenges head on, not by giving us the right answers, but by teaching us how to think so that we may find the answers on our own. What I have learned is that a successful Maryland graduate never limits him or herself, but embraces new opportunities. As Maryland graduates, we are cognizant of the fact that the distant and even the immediate futures are unknown, but that this university has prepared all of us to, to appreciate uncertainty, to take chances, and to find excitement in that process. So, fellow graduates, I encourage you to take those chances, inevitably make some mistakes, and learn from them. Before I finish, I'd like to share some wisdom from the great Daniel Handler, better known by his pen name, Lemony Snicket. At times, the world may seem an unfriendly and sinister place, but believe that there is much more good in it than bad. All you have to do is look hard enough, and what might seem to be a series of unfortunate events may in fact be the first steps of a journey. Class of 2014, I wish you the best of luck on the first steps of your new journey. That was great. And, and I really want a selfie with her that I will then tweet. You mind? Okay. What great remarks. Thank you so much, Kelsey. You make us proud. All of our students make us proud. This is what the University of Maryland produces. And, uh, but it's not just about words, it's also about music. And now the Maryland Wind Ensemble, conducted again by Craig Potter, a doctoral student in music, will perform. They will perform the March and the Trip Pack from the Nutcracker Suite by Piotr Tchaikovsky.
Thank you, Marilyn Wynn Ensemble, for that rousing and poignant performance of the Nutcracker Suite. We are very fortunate, indeed, at this university to have such talented art students, music students in particular. You greatly enrich our cultural life, and you touch us with your performance. At graduation, we have a committee of seniors to select the university's commencement speaker. So it is my privilege to invite the chair of this committee, Louis Chavon, who will introduce this year's commencement speaker. Hi. Good evening. Thank you, Dr. Lowe. My name is Louis Chavon, and I'm a member of this year's Senior Class Council. It is my honor to introduce this evening's commencement speaker, Mrs. Un Yang. We are so pleased to have such an esteemed speaker with a deep connection to this university and to our lives as gra excuse me, graduates. Born in South Korea, Ms. Yang received her degree from the Philip Merrill College of Journalism here at the University of Maryland, where she now serves on the Board of Visitors. Ms. Yang started her broadcast media career here on campus while working on the student TV newscast, Maryland Update, which is now known as Maryland Newsline. In her time since graduation, she has worked as part of several DC region news teams, namely WUSA 9, which is a CBS affiliate, and she was one of the first correspondents for the National Geographic Channel. She joined NBC Washington News 4 in 2002, and she started anchoring weekends in 2004. As a result, Ms. Yang is a face and voice that is instantly recognizable to many in the audience this evening, and especially to us Terps, as Ms. Yang has reported some of the stories that have shaped our time as young adults. Through our past four years as students at the University of Maryland, Ms. Yang has shared with us both of President Obama's inaugurations, countless local and national stories, and one headline that we'll never forget from our, our student years, the snowpocalypse of 2009. In true Terp spirit, Miss Yang's career has been marked by commitment and loyalty in addition to her vibrant success. Despite receiving offers to work in the New York City market, one of the biggest media markets in the world, Miss Yang has elected to stay in the DC metro area. As anchor of News 4 Today on NBC Washington, Miss Yang goes on air at 4.26 a.m. each day. I'll let that sink in how early that is. <laughs> you all thought that waking up for an occasional 8 a.m. class was kind of difficult. Now here she is, Terps. I'm pleased and honored to welcome Miss Un Yang. Louis, thank you so much. Checks in the mail. Um, good evening, President Lowe, faculty and staff, honored guests, family and friends, and graduates. I am so honored to be here at my beloved University of Maryland to speak at your commencement tonight. Congratulations. The honor is not lost on me. I love the streamers, I, I really do. They're so festive. Um, typically, when I'm at the Xfinity Center, I still want to call it Comcast. Um, I'm actually sitting where you are, screaming at a basketball game, right? Um, which, by the way, I am planning to do next Saturday, so I prefer this order, so I'll have my voice for this. And I just want to take a moment to say how awesome it is that our Terps are ranked again for the first time in five years, right? That's great! And I think, that is the beauty of being a hometown girl, is that I get to be on campus all the time. I'm here for the Board of Visitors meetings, I'm here for games, I'm here for the ice cream at Maryland Dairy, let's be honest. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why I was invited to speak here, is the proximity. No travel expenses, right? <laughs> um, but really, this is such a great honor for me, uh, especially because I was chosen by the students. I think that um, when I stand up here and the pre President Lowe is talking about the accomplishments of the people standing up here, I mean the provost's work I can't even pronounce, I don't even know what, what she does, it's so, and then there's a, an expert on the poetry of Emily Dickinson, I mean I don't even think that I belong up here with these 
smart, esteemed, accomplished people, but, but here I am, and even uh, my children are a little bit confused. They, they've heard that Cal Ripken spoke at spring. They're like, why would they choose you? Cal Ripken Jr. was here? <laughs> um, I am surprised as well. I'm not the... <laughs> They're over there. Um, I'm not the visionary behind a technological gadget that has revolutionized the way we communicate and really do everything. I am not the top executive and author of a mantra for women on how to overcome gender imbalance in the workplace. I am not the creator of appointment TV shows, which have turned into huge weekly social media events. I myself have yet to watch an episode of Scandal. But I do consider, I know, I've got to get on it. Remember the 4.26 a.m.? That's why I don't watch TV. Um, but I do like to think that my newscast is must-see TV. So you should watch. Thank you. I don't even have my own YouTube station. But here I am, your speaker tonight. Um, when Lewis explained that I was chosen, he said, in part because I'm someone who speaks to a large audience for a living, which is true, but my typical viewers are watching from home. They are brushing their teeth. They are drinking their coffee. They are running on the treadmill. I can't see them. <laughs> and I can hide behind my camera and my lens so that I don't have to see whether or not they're really laughing at my jokes or they're scratching their heads in utter confusion as to what I'm saying. Um, here, I don't even have a teleprompter, for goodness sake. I mean, how am I supposed to move on? But I'm going to do my best here. There is a lot of pressure for me to share some words of wisdom and inspiration with the graduating class, to prove to the parents that your hard-earned tuition money was well spent. Um, and I have no tougher critics than my three young children over there. Wave, guys. My son, my oldest son, did say, break a leg, mommy. So thanks for that. At least my husband will, my, my husband will laugh at my jokes, though. Um, so much has changed since I was at the University of Maryland. When I was a freshman here, you could walk into Cole Fieldhouse with your student ID and get a ticket to any game, any game. Uh, then Joe Smith arrived, and you had to wait in long lines to get a ticket. And if we were playing Duke, you had to skip classes and wait all day. Not that I would skip classes, guys, ever. <laughs> No, 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 no. Um, Maryland basketball has grown so much, and it is so huge, and I love to see the students who organize at the games with their spirit I and mean, their love for the school, not just for sports, but for the academics and for the relationships and the community that is built here at this wonderful school. The way we have communicated has changed. Who would have thought the president of the university would be taking selfies at graduation? I mean, really, he was going down the aisle high-fiving the graduates. I love to see it. I mean, the way we communicate. My speech is currently being streamed live. It is going to be shown on the University of Maryland's television station. I know you all are tweeting because I've already have a tweet from Joyce Co. Where are you, Joyce? I know you're out there. You tweeted me first tweet I got tonight. Um, and I know that you've taken obligatory selfies yourself and Instagram is blowing up. I'm hoping that we get a trend out there. Let's get the University of Maryland trending, create a hashtag. Let's do it. And that's the what, what happens now. Um, when I was here, though, I was just getting the hang of email. True story. I remember one of my classmates from journalism school asked me out via email. Uh, this was the first time this has ever happened to me. And uh, texting didn't exist, as you know. I didn't have a cell phone. And so by the time I got back into the computer lab to check my email, he'd lost interest. So as you can imagine, it uh, didn't date much here at school. And it didn't matter anyway because at least that's what I told myself, because I was singularly focused on trying to do everything I could to get a job in TV news. I wanted to be a TV reporter. Um, but I will say that one thing that hasn't changed, besides Bentleys, um, <laughs> is that, <laughs> thank you, is, and I think it will never change, is the value, value of hard work, really. Um, I can't emphasize enough the importance and the value of hard work. It comes from my family, from my roots. If you want to achieve your goals, you have to work harder and you have to work smarter than the next person. You will get ahead if you are prepared. Make your work ethic a priority. I spent a lot of time in the journalism building, and now you have the beautiful night hall, so shiny and pretty. But my, in my day, it was just a brick building, said journalism, that was it. Um, but this is where I hold up, working on my resume tape. This is where I also saw a flyer 
for the internship that I landed, which eventually landed me the job that I have now, a flyer. It's a piece of paper. They stapled it to the bulletin board. Ask your parents. You'll get it. It's a flyer. Anyway, so when I finally landed that internship, it was my one and only one. Uh, I made an effort to learn everything I could. Everything I could because I said I really, really wanted a job out of college. I'm sure you smart kids probably have some jobs lined up already out there. I know some of you. Um, but I followed reporters around the newsroom. I pretty much stalked them. I asked them questions driving in the back of the crew cars. If they allowed me, I sat next to them at their desk to find out what it is they really do to get their work done. I sat in the edi editing booths. I logged tons and tons of video. Anything I could do so I wouldn't have to sit and answer the phones at work. Um, my best move, though, I think, was making friends making friends with the production assistants. These are entry-level workers who did everything and anything they needed to get the news on the air. And they were nice enough, some of them anyway, were nice enough to teach me how to do their job so that when a production assistant job opened up at the station, I saw my ticket into the business. I'd basically trained for the job already, so instead of a job after college, I took a job while I was in college. Seemed really crazy at the time, probably still is crazy. So here I was a senior trying to graduate, taking classes at 8 a.m. and then hightailing it from College Park to Northwest Washington to work until 11.30 p.m. Don't ask me how I studied for class. I did, I made it. Um, but when I got to work, the producers would yell at me, I mean literally yell at me, do you know what you're doing? And a lot of times I, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. And I should also mention that this job paid between seven and eight dollars an hour, yes. And while I had the designs of working on some hard-hitting news stories, instead I rolled the teleprompter and I ripped scripts. Now we had to do this back in the day. Now we have separate printers that print scripts on the different colored papers that all you have to do is take the scripts and bring them to different people who are part of the news team. But uh, back in the day, this is what I tell the PAs, they have it so easy. We had all the paper was printed in one like accordion, all the colors, accordion bundle. And it was my job then to rip the scripts, rip them and collate them. It was literally death by a thousand paper cuts. One time I had to get dry ice for the weather center for Halloween to make it spooky. And one time I think I had to pick up dry cleaning. So obviously this was not the job in broadcast I had in mind for myself, but I really had no choice but to get after it. Get after it because I knew that I wanted to move forward. I knew I wanted to get that next job. And you have to work your butt off, have to work your butt off, and you can't be above taking those lesser jobs in order to get to the greater ones. Those entry-level positions are the stepping stones that will prepare you for the bigger and better jobs out there if you are willing to work hard. They will give you and they will offer you the fortitude and the perseverance to put you on the right path for your career and for your life. In order to get your dream job, you have to be willing to do some nightmarish work along the way. I put in a lot of extra work put the band-aids on my fingers, seized every opportunity to practice my stand-ups, to improve my writing, learn how to produce stories. I was a production assistant for one year, just one year, and then I was selected to be a reporter trainee, and then I did that for just another one year before I was hired to be a reporter. I was doing my first live report in Washington, D.C. I wish I could tell you that I was an instant star, that I had it from the start of my career and that all the TV executives instantly recognized my on-camera presence and my charisma right away and they all fought to put me on the anchor desk. <laughs> no. Uh, the truth is I kind of sucked <laughs> when I started. No, you can't say that word at home, guys. Um, I, made, I made a lot of mistakes and mercifully there was no YouTube to record my bloopers in perpetuity back then. Thank goodness. Um, but this is why, though, I believe that hard work trumps talent. I want to tell you about one of the first breaking news stories that I did as a budding reporter. It was about a missing three-year-old boy. He was eventually found safe. Um, but I will never forget this child's name, not because the story left such an impression on me. Remember, I wasn't much older than you guys uh, are now, and I wasn't a mom yet. Um, missing toddler headlines have a whole new meaning for me now, of course. But the boy's name was Lamar Arnold and he happened to disappear during an election season. And during this time, Senator Lamar Alexander 
was running to be the Republican nominee for president. So can you guess what I did on live television? Yes. In my live report, I kept referring to three-year-old missing Lamar Alexander. Again and again and again. It was a simple error, right? Arnold, Alex they both even start with A. Oh. But it was a glaring one. And it was one that taught me early on that I would have to work hard at every point in my career. I'd finally landed this job that I wanted on the air in Washington, D.C., but my work was just beginning. I've come a long way since that live report on Lamar Arnold. I have made many mistakes in between, still make mistakes, and I know I will continue to make mistakes. I don't expect that I will call anyone by the wrong name, knock on wood, this happens to be wood, thank you very much. Um, but I'm still working hard to become a better journalist, a better storyteller, a better communicator every morning for every show and for every story. I know that I can do better. There is always room for improvement and space to do more with what you have. Your career will be better for it and so will the journey that gets you there. As you can see from my own experience, just because you have the passion to do something you're, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be good at it right away. Remember, again, hard work trumps talent. Build your talent, develop it, hone it through hard work. I mean, really, because besides Beyonce, who's born a star? Maybe Brian Williams, but that's, you know, I have a, a thing, Brian Williams and NBC. So. so in these next years, while you are building your work experience and considering your career paths, don't forget to work on your character. That is my next very important point. Uh, we know you're all smart. We all know that you're resourceful. We know that you are marketable. You are from Maryland. Yeah. 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 Uh, but don't, I, and I love this, they're keeping my kids entertained, but you know, remember, don't be a jerk. Um, really, don't be a jerk. Remember to be kind. And I say this not just because you'll learn that you'll learn that this world is indeed small and maybe your intern one day will become your boss the next. Um, but I encourage you to be introspective and to have gratitude and to give back and to check yourself so that you can become the best version of yourself possible. Uh, I love my job for so many reasons, but when people ask me why I wanted to pursue journalism, I always go back to the storytelling because I have the great pleasure of hearing compelling stories from people from all walks of life, Jimmy Fallon, and share them with others and maybe improve their lives in the process. Um, but the interview that has stayed with me over the years was with a woman who was not famous, but extraordinary in her own right for not what she accomplished, but for more because of what she taught me about her character. At the age of 80, she received her degree from Gallaudet University, and she spoke to me through sign language, a sign language interpreter. Um, but she spoke to me so freely that I really didn't feel like we had any boundaries between us. And she was so open, and I could really read the joy and, and in her eyes and in her face. She told me that when she graduated from high school, her teachers told her she was one of the smartest kids in the school. But at the time, Gallaudet was the only college for deaf students, and it would not admit African Americans. She was crushed. She went to work on a farm instead. More than 60 years, 60 years later, she received her diploma. And I was fortunate enough to sit down with her that day to talk to her and hear her story. I asked her if she felt any anger or bitterness for the years that she could have spent learning in the classroom instead of working, or for what she could have pursued if she had gone to college at an earlier age. She told me that she worked, she worked to let go of the hurt and sadness so that she could live her life fully without anything holding her back. It didn't happen right away. She was 80 after all, she told me. But instead of anger and fear and bitterness and regret, she chose gratitude, she chose love and selflessness and joy. She didn't go to college, so she helped children in her small town with their schoolwork and encouraged them to go to college. She derived her gratitude and joy from serving others. The decades between her high school graduation and her eventual college graduation were sweet, she said, sweet. 
not because she accumulated wealth or status, but because she cultivated experiences and relationships. She told me that receiving her diploma was just the cherry on top of a good life she had already lived. I could see that she was truly happy that day. She was so beautiful. I always hoped that I could achieve that kind of inner light that would make me beam like she did that day. I wish that for you as well, to live a life full of gratitude and joy and to share that fulfillment with those around you. In the next leg of your journey, work hard. Get after that good life. Work hard in every endeavor and work hard to build your character. Your life's outcome will be determined by what you put into it. And I am confident that as University of Maryland graduates, your hard work will produce meaningful results. Thank you so much and congratulations. Now we're gonna take a selfie. We said we'd take a selfie. You can yes, come exactly. on a <laughs> Didn't happen if we didn't take a picture. Cool. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Thank you again, Miss Yang, for that inspiring and entertaining address, even without a teleprompter. I, that's <laughs> very impressive. Hey. You know, that was so good, in fact, I may actually set my alarm for 4.15 on Monday morning to catch when you come on the air. Actually, I just finished final exams and you all can relate, so I doubt that's gonna happen. But <laughs> to help you to remember this occasion, I would like to present you to you with a gift on behalf of the graduating class. Thank you for that wonderful address. Uh, would you like to share what the gift is? Oh, sure, sure. Okay. I like to know. <laughs> Christmas early. You're like my kids. I can see my children. Yes. Like, Open it. Ooh. Oh, wow. That's neat. Do you know red is my favorite color? Yes. OK. Well, thank you again for a... a wonderful commencement speech. Now, I'd like to call on Ms. Nicole Pollard, President of the University of Maryland Alumni Association, to welcome our graduates into the ranks of the Alumni Association. Now, you should know that, unlike me, Nicole is a real lawyer. She serves as an attorney for the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees. Now me, I am a public interest lawyer. It means that it is in the public interest that I do not practice law. <laughs> Hello, my sorority sisters. <laughs> Thank you, President Lowe. Good evening. It is an honor for me to be here today on behalf of the Alumni Association's Board of Governors to officially welcome you, the class of 2014, into the Maryland alumni family. Beginning today and for the rest of your life, you will be part of an amazing network of individuals, 340,000 strong. Terps are fearless. We have gone on to launch hugely successful companies, make groundbreaking discoveries, and rise to the highest levels of public service. We are making a difference around the world. Michael Armani and David Jones met in a biology class 10 years ago. They are now bringing advanced technology to the masses as the designers of the Micro, one of the first consumer-friendly 3D printers. Tiffany Williams, 
who earned her master's in community planning at Maryland in 2008, is now the executive director for Teach of America in Detroit, working to rejuvenate that city through the power of education. And Brooks Gable, who received his BA in marketing just last spring, has launched JustLikeYou.org, a free and anonymous social network for people looking to talk about coming out as a sexual or gender minority. Michael, David, Tiffany, and Brooke are just a few examples of fearless University of Maryland alumni who are making a difference across the country and around the world. You are about to go out into that world, whether to join the workforce, obtain an advanced degree, create the next big idea, serve our country in the armed services, you will be a living, breathing testament of a value of a Maryland degree. You can ensure that its value continues to appreciate by remaining engaged in Maryland and serving as mentors, volunteers, philanthropists, advocates, and yes, big fans. Your relationship with the University of Maryland does not end today. It's a lifelong when you become a member of the Alumni Association. The Alumni Association serves to enrich professional and personal lives through continuous learning, networking, recreation, and keeping you connected to the university. You can receive the benefits of this amazing network by visiting us at alumni.umd.edu and joining as a member. As you leave here today, you will carry with you the proud legacy associated with being a Terrapin. There is no doubt that we are fearless and that we maintain the highest levels of excellence in everything that we do. Go out into the world, take it by charge, and let everyone know that you're Terp. Congratulations, class of 2014. Go Terps! Thank you, Nicole, and thank you for your service as president of the Alumni Association, all 300,000 strong. And correct me if I'm wrong, they get free, the, the membership is free the first year, is that correct? Yes, so please sign up to become a member of the Alumni Association and stay in touch. It doesn't cost you a penny the first year. <laughs> the late Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall said, quote, none of us got to where we are solely by pulling ourselves up by our own bootstraps. You graduates are talented, accomplished, and dedicated. And we are very proud of you. But talented, accomplished, and dedicated as you are, you are not alone in your accomplishments. Somebody bent down. Somebody helped you put on your boots. Somebody taught you how to tie them. And somebody loved you, encouraged you, and believed in you. And because of that somebody, father, mother, spouse, relatives, friend, you are here today. So I would like to ask all these somebodies, parents, relatives, friends, to please stand. And when the band plays a salute, I want our graduates to stand and cheer them on, the band. All right, so uh, we have finally come to the moment you've been waiting for, the presentation of degrees. And uh, I'm, going each of the, I'm going to ask each of the deans to come forward one at a time, introduce themselves, and introduce your college. 
And of course, I invite the graduates to stand up and cheer when your college is announced. So we begin with Dean Chen Wei. I'm Dean Chen Wei, and I'm proud to present the candidates from the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources. <laughs> this, <laughs> this candidate will help us dealing with the nutrition and the food production for the 9 billion population in year 2050. They will all also help us to protect our beautiful environment and help us maintain the sustainability of the natural resources. Congratulations. Good evening. I'm Dean David Cronrath, Dean of the School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation. It gives me great privilege to introduce the candidates, the real estate developers who see paradise even in winter, the planners who protect the public's interest and also make sure that all reindeer flight paths are clear, <laughs> the architects who make every Christmas look like a white Christmas, and finally the preservationists who know the true dimension of all chimneys so that old Saint Nick can come down and also go up. The graduates. Good evening. I'm Bonnie Thornton Dill, Professor of Women's Studies and Dean of the College of Arts and Humanities. Graduates from the College of Arts and Humanities, affectionately known as RHU, are creative innovators and global problem solvers. They have the skills and talents employers in the 21st century seek. They write well, they read critically, they listen actively, they communicate effectively and think creatively. They are culturally aware and linguistically adept. They are worldwide. So graduates, you may be standing already, but I don't know if you all are. So if you are our Hugh, please stand, give yourselves a big round of applause and congratulations. My name is Gregory Ball. I'm professor of psychology and the dean of the College of Behavioral and Social Sciences. For three, <laughs> for three whole months, <laughs> I've been enjoying my new job immensely. And the best thing about my job are the students. The students at BSOS, as we call it, are addressing some of the most difficult problems facing science today. And you might wonder what those problems are. You're thinking, oh, rocket science, uh, particle physics, why humans do what they do, how they do it, and what are we going to do about it? So many of the challenges facing our world today have to do with behavior and people's attitudes and their understanding of the world and how they engage it. And in our college, we have students attacking these problems from the perspective of psychology, sociology, to criminology, as well as economics and political science. <laughs> these students all have one thing in common. They pursue excellence in order to be the solution. So graduates of Vsauce, please stand and accept my applause. Good evening. I'm Alex Trianis, Dean of the Robert H. Smith School of Business. Would the graduates of the Robert H. Smith School of Business stand up? These are graduates in majors including accounting, finance, marketing, information systems, international business, 
supply chain management, and operations management. And throughout their years here, they have learned a great deal about business, but they have also greatly honed their critical thinking skills and developed their entrepreneurial mindset as well as a great global mindset. They will be solving the unknown complex business problems of the future and in short order will be leading businesses and other organizations for the greater good of society. Congratulations, Smith School graduates. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Jayant Banavar, a theoretical physicist and the proud dean of the College of Computer, Mathematical, and Natural Sciences. The home of ideas that matter. Standing in front of us <laughs> are our graduates who will change the world. Our graduates will heal the sick and will save lives. They will have a deep understanding of the physical world, our planet Earth, and our amazing universe. And they will be the drivers of the technological innovations of tomorrow. Congratulations, graduates. Good evening, everyone. I'm Donna Wiseman. I started my career as an elementary teacher, but I became a professor and researcher in children's liter literacy development, and now, I am the proud dean of our College of Education. Our College of Education's alumni, they are teachers, counselors, psychologists, school administrators, human development specialists, and educational researchers. They positively motivate, support, and encourage children, young people, and adults to learn, innovate, create, and contribute to our society in so many ways. I dare say there's not a one of you out here that hasn't been impacted by an educator. Educators are the foundational part of our future and, the continue, and, our, and contribute to the continued growth of our state and nation and indeed the world. That's why I'm so proud to introduce to you the College of Education's 2014 winter graduates. Good evening, everyone. My name is Darrell Pines, and I am a true rocket scientist. <laughs> and I'm also the proud dean of the A. James Clark School of Engineering. Will the graduates of the A. James Clark School of Engineering rise? In the words of the great aerospace engineer, Theodore von Karman, scientists study the world as it is, but engineers create a world that has never been. To the graduates of the Clark School, go out there and create a world that has never been. Engineer a better world. Thank you. Congratulations. I'm Jane Clark. I'm the dean of the School of Public Health. I'm a professor of kinesiology. I leave you with one thought at the end of this day. Besides the fact that our graduates will help the world be a healthier place for all, we will prevent you from going to the doctor because it's about the health of the population. We have community health, we have kinesiology, family science, environmental health, epidemiology, biostatistics, and health services administration all in the school. I leave you with one thought, especially as we come to the close of this. Sitting is the new smoking. <laughs> the leading cause of death, third leading cause, used to be smoking. 
It's now your sedentary lifestyle. Go School of Public Health, we will change the world. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jennifer Priest. I'm um, a specialist in online communities and human computer interaction and various other things concerned with information. And it's my pleasure to be the Dean of the College of Information Studies, Maryland's Information School, or iSchool for short. And you've already uh, heard a lot about libraries from Kelsey Hughes, and I hope Kelsey has Maryland's iSchool on her list, she's nodding, of the place to come and do her graduate work because we're a graduate-only school. We have a tremendous uh, program in library science. Oh, what did I say? Um, we also have a wonderful program in other information areas, particularly information management. And these are the graduates who will interpret the world that is yet to be, that the engineers will create and explain the human behavior that happens there. They're already doing this with things like Twitter and Facebook and many other types of technology and of course cybersecurity. So we're a graduate only school. There's only a, a few master's students compared with the huge sea of undergraduates, but you're very precious and congratulations to all of you. And please make a lot of noise and wave. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Lucy Dalglish. I am a journalist, I'm a journalist and a lawyer, and I'm proud to be the Dean of the Philip Merrill College of Journalism. Our graduates major in either multi-platform or broadcast journalism. They go on to gather information that all of you need to participate in our society and to be, help everyone become citizens of the world. This is the Philip Merrill College of Journalism's graduates. And I have to say tonight, we are just bursting with pride to have graduates Kelsey Hughes and On Yang on the stage as our commencement speakers. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Robert Orr, the Dean of the School of Public Policy. Could I? Could I ask our graduates to stand, please? Public policy graduates serve the public good. They do so by creating organizations to end hunger here in PG County. They do so in Annapolis. They do so in the halls of Congress. And they do so on the front lines of fighting climate change. <laughs> we try to ensure that public policy graduates work cooperatively but we also get a little competitive sometimes. So I'm happy to say that we've recently had five of our graduates awarded the prestigious uh, Presidential Management Fellowship, which is more than any other school of public policy in the United States. And in this cathedral of basketball, let me say it's more than Duke University has ever produced. Graduates, go forth, do good, and serve the public good. I salute you. Good evening, my name is Charles Caramello. I'm a literary scholar and dean of the graduate school. Uh, as a research and land grant university, our mission is to produce both new and useful knowledge and to prepare the next generation of knowledge producers. Our doctoral graduates have all created original knowledge in their disciplines and are now the experts from whom other scholars and researchers cite. Our master's graduates, as the name suggests, have mastered the body of knowledge in their disciplines and in many professional fields are now prepared to be leaders. Would the doctoral graduates of the university please stand? Any, any, all of the colleges. <laughs> and
And would the master's graduates please join them? Congratulations to all of you. We're getting close to the end. I'm Donna Hamilton. My academic field, I'm a scholar in Shakespeare and 16th century English literature. But since, since 2003, I've had the great honor of being the dean for undergraduate studies, and so I've had the opportunity to serve all the undergraduate students at the University of Maryland. In my, in my portfolio, <laughs> one of the very special things we have is a small program that allows students to create their own majors. With about 130 majors possible at the University of Maryland, you would think no one would have to create an individual major. But there are people here who have a great sense of unease and anxiety and dissatisfaction. Their appetite is very large for something unique. They're very persistent and creative, and they want something else. And I congratulate those students. Every year we have a small but strong cohort of students who create their own majors and go on to do extraordinary things. We have four this um, winter. Are they here? Would, if you are here, would you stand? And whether you are here or not, we want to congratulate you. I think I must be the end. I'm Pat Steele, Dean of Libraries, and I'm really pleased that libraries were so much of a theme this evening. So on behalf of the libraries, I'm going to claim all of you for your success because we were part of that. So if you use the libraries or knew you should have, stand up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, and I'm mindful, Dean Clark, that sitting is the new smoking. And looking at my watch, we are making good time. This will be perhaps the shortest graduation in the four or five years I've been here. So we take care of our students' health and the health of all of their friends and family members. So thank you, deans. It's great to see the energy and the, and the enthusiasm of our graduates. And finally, the most important moment has arrived, the moment when you're officially authorized to receive your degrees. So, uh, in a moment, Provost Ranking will announce the dozens of diplomas that will be awarded. But for the benefit of friends and family who are here, maybe I should just take a moment to tell you about the meaning of these diplomas. You see, when you're, when you're in high school, and you think that you know everything that there is to know, that's when the high school gives you a, a diploma. And then you come to college. And then you realize, it dawns upon you, how much, how little you know, and how much more you need to learn. And when that realization arrives, you have earned a bachelor's degree. But if you hang around a little bit longer, you go to graduate school, and it further dawns upon you that you know so little, but that your professors know so little as well. <laughs> That's when the university bestows upon you the PhD. <laughs> because you see, what is education? but the progressive discovery of our own ignorance. As the poet Yeats said, education is not the filling of a pail, it's the igniting of a flame. It is the igniting of a passion for learning that will last a lifetime. If we have done our jobs right, and our wonderful faculty who are here 
I know they have done their jobs right. You will be a learner for life. And so I'm about to call Provost Ranking to come forward and present the candidates for the degrees. But I'm just curious, and I'm addressing not this to the faculty and the students, but to the parents, the friends, the families who are here, because I'm going to summon the provost. How many of you here know what a provost is? <laughs> Raise your arms. Well, there's a, uh, there's a few hands. The provost is the chief academic officer. But I thought you might be interested to know the historical origins of that term. I am told that the word provost first entered the English language in around 1600, when William Shakespeare, in Measure for Measure, talked about a provost. Back in those days, a provost was the chief guardian of a prison. <laughs> so uh, somehow we have evolved over time so that the provost of the university is the chief academic officer. I don't know what's the significance of that, but I thought I would share with you <laughs> that bit of historical information. So Provost Ranking, would you please come forward? Thank you, President Lowe. I want to congratulate all you inmates uh, <laughs> now that you're about to be released. <laughs> so, Mr. President, in accordance with the recommendation of the faculties of the schools and colleges, and in recognition of the successful completion of all degree requirements, I request that you confer upon these in, uh, candidates <laughs> the degrees of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Landscape Architecture, Bachelor of Music, Bachelor of Music Education, Bachelor of Science, Master of Applied Anthropology, Master of Architecture, Master of Arts, Master of Business Administration, Master of Chemical and Life Sciences, Master of Community Planning, Master of Education, Master of Engineering, Master of Engineering and Public Policy, Master of Finance, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Health Administration, Master of Historic Preservation, Master of Information Management, Master of Journalism, Master of Landscape Architecture, Master of Library Science, Master of Music, Master of Professional Studies, Master of Public Health, Master of Public Management, Master of Public Policy, Master of Real Estate Development, Master of Science, Doctor of Audiology, Doctor of Education, Doctor of Musical Arts, and Doctor of Philosophy, as appropriate in each case. Will all candidates for degrees please stand? Congratulations, graduates. I am pleased to accept the faculty's recommendations under the authority granted by the State of Maryland to the Board of Regents of the University System of Maryland and by the authority the Board has delegated to me. I am delighted to confer upon you the candidates, the degrees as appropriate in each case. Please join me in one more round of applause for our graduates. Now I would like to ask all the graduating seniors on the platform to please come here and lead our graduates in the long-standing tradition that recognizes your receipt of degrees. All right, uh, please join us as we move our tassels from the right to the left. Uh, can I get a drum roll, please? <laughs> on the count of three, 
please follow me in a tassel switch from the right to the left. One, One two, two, three. three. Thank you. You may be seated. Now, so that everybody can share in the celebration, I've got to ask this question to the family and relatives and friends who are here. Um, how many of you attended the University of Maryland? Raise your arms. Oh, I would estimate about, what, 20, 25%. Well, what do we do about the rest of you? <laughs> well, by the authority delegated to me, I hereby confirm, confer upon you today the title of Honorary Terp. Congratulations. In a moment, Amy Broadbent and Craig Potter and the Wynn Ensemble will lead us all in the singing of the alma mater. And the words can be found on page five of your program. But before we do so, I thought I might uh, walk you through the words of the alma mater uh, in my own fashion, which means that when I raise my arm, I want you all to yell so loudly that you'll raise the roof of Xfinity Center. I want you to yell, Maryland, all right? Here it goes. Hail, alma mater, hail to thee. Yeah. Steadfast in loyalty, we stand for. Yeah. Love for the black and gold, deep in our hearts we hold. Yeah. Singing thy praise forever throughout. Yeah. Go Terps, go. Please stand for the singing of the alma mater. So we come to the end of the 2014 December commencement exercises, making record time an hour and 30 minutes shorter than a regular feature movie. <laughs> I will ask the audience to please remain seated until the faculty and the platform party have recessed. And of course, you know that the smaller, the more intimate commencement exercises held by different departments and colleges will take place, I believe, tomorrow. Um, at which time you will have the opportunity to walk across the stage, shake hands with uh, the dean, the department chair, um, and receive your diploma. Actually, it's a piece of paper. It's not the actual diploma until you get your final <laughs> grades. But it's a wonderful event. And, um, 
And uh, unfortunately, because of the size of, of commencement when the whole university is here, we cannot do that. So I thought, um, and, and I'm, I'm reminded, when I was a dean, that was my favorite part, you know, to stand there and shake the hands of each graduate. So I was an alumni uh, event, that was a few years ago, and this graduate comes up to me and says, Dean Lowe, do you remember me? You shook my hand and gave me my diploma and you whispered some words in my ear when I was walking across that stage. And those words have been the secret to my success in life. Wow, I said. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> move along, move along. <laughs> well, um, so what I'd like to offer you is at the pavilion, that's the small gym where you assembled. I'm gonna be there and I'll be honored to shake your hand, take a selfie if you want, and, and I don't know if you can see this, give you a little baby turtle pin. What is special about this 93, cent, 93 cents pin is that you cannot buy it anywhere. You can only get it from me, which means it is priceless. <laughs> and I urge you, please keep it. Don't do what some enterprising students have done since I started giving them away about two months ago or three months ago. You may have seen them on eBay. <laughs> Last time I looked, they were going for $18. But if you save them in 20, 30 years, just think how much they will be worth. <laughs> and uh, I know some of you have commented favorably on my bow tie. I just want to let you know, I never wear, uh, wear bow ties, but I just got this as a present three days ago from a student. I was uh, visiting Prince Frederick Hall, and she came up to me and gave me this bow tie. So I'm a walking commercial for this bow tie because in her spare time, she has recruited four other undergraduate students to work for her to make bow ties. <laughs> and uh, you can find her on UMD Bows. <laughs> so uh, this is my walking commercial for her. So uh, your graduation then marks the end of a chapter and the beginning of a new chapter. You are going into the future. You are the future. You are the best hope our society has for tomorrow. And I want to bid you farewell, in part by quoting the immortal words of that venerable philosopher, Dr. Seuss who wrote for children of all ages. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You are now on your own. You know what you know. You decide where to go. Sadly, it's true. Hang-ups can happen to you. There will be times when you mix up your right foot with your left and your arms get sore and your sneakers leak. But always remember, you are a terp. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, the terrapin is that unique creature that lives in Chesapeake Bay. And that little adorable turtle has a rather unique habit. It can only go forward. It doesn't go back. And how does that turtle go forward? By sticking its neck out and taking one step at a time. 
That is the TERP attitude. That's the TERP can-do mindset. It's called chutzpah. It's called moxie. It's called audacity. You are a TERP. You think big. You aim high. You never give up. You never give in. You move forward, sticking your neck out one step at a time. This is why generations of TERPs Lead, li lead lives of accomplishment, success, and service. Will you succeed? Dr. Sue says, you will indeed. 98 and 3 fourths percentage guaranteed. <laughs> In my opinion, you have already, you are a Terp. So go forth. Your mountain is waiting. Get on your way. God bless you and Godspeed.